ready. Yes. Tell your neighbor, I'll hear in your suba. Ia ka munka wogo yao. Ia ka munka wogo Forever and ever and ever you are unlimited. In your wonders you are unlimited. In your miracles you are unlimited. In your power you are unlimited. In your blessings you are unlimited. In your mercy you are unlimited. In your size there is no limit. And so Father we praise you this evening. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all of the previous editions of the Holy Ghost service. Thank you for the sixth edition in the year 2023. Thank you for the signs and the wonders that have happened. Thank you for the signs and the wonders that are taking place right now. Thank you for the signs and the wonders that are set to take place. We say thank you. Thank you for our father, the general of Asia. Thank you for our mother, our mother in Israel. Thank you for the redeemed Christian church of God worldwide. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for the redemption camp. Thank you for the redemption city. Thank you for every member of the redeemed Christian church of God. Of a truth, you have been wonderful to us. And Jesus, we say thank you. Take all the glory. Take all the praise. In the name of Jesus, have we prayed. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Come on, in Jesus' name have we prayed. Can you look for a neighbor, give them a high five, and tell them from today, wonders will be an everyday event in your life. Come on, turn to another person and tell them from today, wonders will be an everyday event in your life. Can we take the next 30 seconds to please clap for God in the wonders, for in the life of our father and our mother, of a truth, God has been wonderful in their lives and will say thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. My sincere appreciation to the leadership of the church at all levels. My appreciation to everyone who made it possible for me to be standing before you today. I pray in the name of Jesus that wonders 
will become an everyday event in your life in the name of Jesus. The topic before us for this month's Holy Ghost service is understanding the God of wonders. Understanding the God of wonders. There are three major words or three main words in that topic. The first is understanding. The second is God. And the third is wonder. The first understanding. The second God. And the third is wonder. We'll take the last two and we'll come to the first one at the end of this meeting. What does it mean? What is a wonder? A wonder is something that is not normal. A wonder is something that is not normal. We can also describe a wonder as something that is beyond our reasoning. A wonder is something that is beyond our reasoning. Now, the second word, God. Who is God? Thank God for the Bible in Psalm 72 verse 18. Psalm 72 verse 18. It says, Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does one just things. Psalm 72 verse 18. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does one just things. So we can, we can interpret the topic of today to mean that understanding the God of wonders is understanding the one who only does things that are beyond your reasoning, that are beyond your imagination, things that are super normal. How do we understand the God of wonders? How do we understand the God of wonders? We need to note a few things in understanding the God of wonders. Number one thing to note, when God is set to do wonders, God can bypass a man if need be. When God is set to do wonders, God can bypass a man if need be. We see this in Genesis chapter 2, 5 to 6. Genesis chapter 2, 5 to 6. The account of creation. It says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Take note of this verse. And there was not a man to till the ground. But something important happened in verse 6. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. God, when he created the heavens and the earth, before he put man in the garden, there was no man to water the face of the earth. But because he is unlimited in wonders and he can bypass a man if need be, God made it possible that from the very earth you're standing upon today, mist was able to come out and it was able to water the, the face of the earth. If you look at 6, it says it watered the whole face. In other words, nothing was left. So child of God, take notes this evening. Evening. Paradventure, God is bypassing a man to do wonders in your life. It does not mean that the wonders will be incomplete. When he started in Genesis chapter 2, verse 6, he says he watered the whole face of the ground. So wherever you turned to in the garden, there was water there. Why? Because the wonder of God was at play. In 1 Kings chapter 17, 2 to 4, again we see that God can bypass man if need be. 1 Kings chapter 17, 2 to 4, the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook chariot which flows into the Jordan. Verse 4 And it shall be that you shall drink from the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you. Paraventure God has commanded a man and they have blocked, your, they have blocked their ears. But the God who can command a bed and is able to get the location of the prophet without missing a meter, without missing his location, that God is speaking to the ends of the earth. And if our adventure man has said, I'm not going to help you, but God is bypassing them and is bringing wonders in your life. I need you to hold somebody by your side and pray for them and say, Father, if you need to bypass men to do wonders in the life of my brother and in my sister, please do it right now. But adventure God needs to bypass a man or a woman. Father, bypass them today and do wonders in my life. Come on, in the next 20 seconds, can you say that prayer? God, if you need to bypass a man, if you need to bypass a woman to bring about wonders in my life, in the life of my friend, do so today in the name of Jesus understanding the god of wonders number one we said god can bypass a man number two Paradventure God is so merciful and he wants to include a man. What God needs is just a little input, just a little effort. When God decides to involve man, just a little input is required. And you know the beautiful thing? 
that impute can be anything. Tell your neighbor anything. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. And they blew the trumpets, and the people shouted, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went into the city, and every man straight before him, and they took the city. If we have structural engineers in the house this evening, please, what is the correlation between noise and trumpets and the wall of Jericho falling down? Is there any relationship? Is it as strong as a bomb? Is it as powerful as a missile? But because God went there to involve a man, and he knows that the impute of that man can be anything, God told Joshua and the Israelites, just shout. I would use your shouts to bring down the wall of Jericho. When they came to the prophet Elisha, and they told prophet Elisha, when they came to prophet Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 2, 19 to 22, they came and they said, the water of this city is bitter and there is barrenness. Elisha said, give me a new bowl and he poured salt in it. He went to the source of the river and he poured salt in it. Again, I ask you a question. What is the relationship between salt and bitterness? Between salt and barrenness? But because the God who is unlimited in wonders was the one that just went to involve prophet Elisha. He said, if it's salt, I would use. If it's sand, I would use. Just make sure that you're doing something. So Elisha went to the source of the river and when he poured it in barrenness ceased bitterness ceased in the name of Jesus whatever your input will be this evening barrenness bitterness and everything ugly will cease in your life in the name of Jesus <laughs> point number three number one we said God can bypass man number two if he decides to use man just a little input is necessary point number three God can do wonders anywhere. Tap your neighbor and say anywhere. As long as your challenge has a location, God can do wonders in that location. God did, water, God did wonders in the sea. He parted the rest sea like my brothers have said. In our bodies, God can do wonders. In our wombs, God can do wonders. In the air, God can do wonders. Before man thought of flying, God was already flying his prophets to heaven. In the name of Jesus, a wonder that has never been seen, a wonder that has never been heard, that civilization has not caught up with, that technology has not discovered, God will do in your life in the name of Jesus. God can do wonders in a nation. The nation of Israel is a good example. But a better example is this our nation, Nigeria. Do you know this is a wonderful nation? Do you believe this is a wonderful nation? God can do wonders in our church. I don't need a better example. The redeemed Christian church of God is a wonder to the world. Come on, celebrate Jesus. God can do wonders to our mental faculty. And so he made Joseph who was in prison for years, being able to give an economic advice that has never been heard of. Why? Because he can do wonders anywhere. He anointed the hands of Bezalel so that all of the instructions that God gave to Moses, Bezalel was able to bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus, is there anything that is wrong with your mental faculty? Is there a comprehension that is difficult for you? Because God can do wonders anywhere. Receive your wonders in the name of Jesus. As you're seated, can you just bow your head and pray? Father, you are not limited by location. Please, wherever my challenge is located, turn it into a wonder. In the name of Jesus. Can you say that prayer for 20 seconds? You are not limited by location. Wherever my challenge is located, turn it into a wonder. In the name of Jesus. Number one, God can bypass man. Number two, if he decides to include man, a little input. Number three, God can do wonders anywhere. Number four, God can do wonders through anyone. God did wonders through the prophets. He did wonders through the judges in Israel. He did wonders through the apostles. But something interesting was happening in the Bible. As God 
was working wonders through all of these people, the judges in Israel, the prophets, true kings, true warriors. God was preparing the world for a super wonder. It was going to be, and it is still, the biggest wonder ever. And the beautiful thing about this is that God was giving us hints in scriptures that there is yet to come a wonder that has never been seen, a wonder that has never been heard of. One of the examples in scripture we know about that God was giving and telling us about this super wonder that is to come is Numbers chapter 24 verse 17. Numbers 24 verse 17. Balaam prophesied and said, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of Timuth. That was not the end. Micah chapter 5 verse 2. God still speaking of the greatest wonder to come. Micah chapter 5 verse 2. But you Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, but out of you we come out of Judah. Sorry, I'll take it again. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come out for me, one who will be ruler over Israel. His origins are from old, from ancient times. We have a lesson to learn from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Look at the opening verse. He said, but though you are small, in the name of Jesus, God is telling you this evening, but though you are small, but though there is nothing remarkable about you, but though you are ordinary, but out of you, can you place your hand on your belly and decree and say, though I am small today, though I am little today, though I am not remarkable yet, though God is still working on me, but out of me shall come forth one who's going forth to be from everlasting to everlasting. Because the wonders of God are without end. As you have decreed in your life, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Micah chapter 5 verse 2 said, One person is coming out from you. How is this going to be possible? How was this going to come about? This greatest wonder that we talk about. It is possible because a child was going to be born. A son was going to be given. And now look at the most interesting part about it. Because God was preparing the world for the greatest wonder, he could not hide his feelings. He could not hide his plans. He had to give the first name. Or he had to name that son. The first name he gave that son was what? The first name he gave that son was what? So God was saying, this child that I am bringing, he is so wonderful that I have to call him wonderful. Now I want you to take note of this. The name of this son, as we all know, is Jesus. But because of the wonders that God went to do to Jesus, he had to give him another name. In the name of Jesus, whatever your name is this evening, because of the wonders that God is going to do in your life, another name will be given unto you. And that name will be called Wonderful. In the name of Jesus. And finally, when Jesus came, he showed the whole world that if God could do all of the wonders you have heard about by the special grace of God and the anointing of God, I can even do much more. Remember point number one, we said God can bypass a man. Jesus went further. He did not just bypass a man, he bypassed the systems of men. So he went one day and he saw people fishing and they said, Master, we have told all night and we have caught nothing. In other words, what they were saying is, we have used the proven system of men. Our fathers have fished at night and they got their greatest harvest. But Jesus was telling them, I'm not just bypassing man, I'm bypassing the system of man. And then he told them, cast your net. And Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word we will cast our net. And when they did cast their net, the catch they got was the big guest ever in the name of Jesus maybe the systems of this world have held you down they have said you cannot go past a level they've said you cannot go past a limit Jesus is bypassing those systems and your catch will be the biggest ever in the name of Jesus we said 
if God decides to use a man, he needs just a little input. And the same thing happened in the case of Jesus. They came to him in a wedding and they said, we have run out of wine. And look at what he told them in John chapter 2, 7 to 8. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. Can we move on to verse 9, please? John chapter 2 and verse 9. When the ruler of the feast has tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not where it was, but the servants who drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called to the bridegroom, Take note of this, please, in verse 10. Verse 10, please. And said unto him, Every man at the beginning set forth the good wine, and when men have drunk that which is worse, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until when? Until when? He says, please, still verse 10, please. He says, but you have kept the good wine until now. Do you know what this means? What this means is that because you have Jesus, your wonders are now. Your wonders are not in the past. And in the future, your wonders will not be in the past. I think you need to stand on your feet and make that declaration. And say, because I have Jesus, because I have Jesus, my wonders are now. My wonders are not in the past. And in the future, my wonders will not be in the past. Can you say that again? Because I have Jesus, my wonders are now. My wonders are not in the past. And in the future, my wonders will not be in the past. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Jesus said something in, in where we just read. When his mother came, Take notes, please. I'm rounding up now. When Elisha was met by the men of Jericho, they saw that the double portion had rested on him. So they knew that his time had come. So they had all confidence to approach him. But in the case of Jesus, when his mother met him, he told her, woman, my time has not come. Does that blow your head? If his time has not come and he could do wonders, how about now that all power has been given unto him on hell in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth? That means the wonders that God is set to do in your life is more than you can think, than you can comprehend, that you can imagine and that you can ask about. Concluding now, we said, earlier on I said there are three main words from our topic. Understanding God and wonders. We said wonders are something beyond our reasoning. We said God has been described as the only person that can do wonders. Now, what does it mean to understand? In simple terms, we can say we understand something when we have experienced that thing. So people can explain to you and you can read and you can hear and you can watch but until you have an experience of that thing only then can you now say aha i understand in the name of jesus you would understand the god of wonders please be on your feet as we pray I'm just going to take one prayer point and we'll be done. The master of the feet said, you have kept the best wine until now. If you have Jesus here, congratulations. Your prayer point is this. Father, because I have Jesus, let wonders become an everyday event in my life. And let it happen. I cannot hear you. And let it happen when? So can you lift up your voice and say, Father, because I have Jesus in my life, let wonders become an everyday event in my life and let it happen now in the name of Jesus. Because you have Jesus, wonders will become an everyday event in your life and it will happen now in the name of Jesus. God can use anything to bring about wonders. God can use anything to bring about wonders. And this evening, I want God to use our clap to bring about a wonder. So for the next 30 seconds, can your clap rise up to the King of Kings?